Here we are again, guys, with another Doki Doki Literature Club. And it's becoming more and more obvious now that we're frequently getting hit with glitches. And I'm assuming that we're now in a completely different reality. And in this one, or I don't even know if reality is the right word, but we're being reset. And we just lost Sayori. And characters, the characters that I knew are now changing. Like Yuri. A little bit of Na uh, a little bit of Natsuki and oh, I don't even get me started on Monica. I don't even know. I don't even want to know. But here we are, <laughs> and we're just gonna have to find out and see what goes on from here, guys. So I hope you continue to enjoy watching and join me on this journey, cause this is just getting more and more intense by the <laughs> by the minute. So with that said, let's go, guys. All right, guys, we're continuing where we last left off. Sorry about that. They really shouldn't have tried to get you involved. It's probably better for us to stay out of this. We'll go back inside once they're done yelling. <laughs> Some present I am, right? I can't even confront my own club members properly. I just wish I was able to be a little more assertive sometimes. But I never have it in me to put my foot down against others. You understand, right? Anyway. If this makes you want to spend less time with the others, then that's fine. Wow. That's a... That's a flag there. I'd be happy to spend time with you instead. Oh, and there it is. Suddenly, Natsuki runs out of the classroom. She quickly runs away. Oh dear. Well, it looks like they're done. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Yuri's rocking back and forth in her desk with her palms on her forehead. Yuri? I didn't mean it. I I believe you. I have no idea what Yuri might have said to Natsuki. Or did. Michael, please don't hate me. Please. I'm not like this. Ah, oh, we are seeing some breaking points already. There's something wrong with me today. It's fine, Yuri. We know you didn't mean it. Besides, I'm sure Natsuki will forget all about it by tomorrow. Completely. Ah, she knows something. She knows something. Anyway, the meeting is over, so you can go home now if you want. Yuri looks at me like she wants to say something. But she keeps glancing at Monica. You can go first, Monica. I'd like to stay a little bit longer. I'm the president, so I should be the last one out. I'll wait for you to be done. Well, I'm vice president, so please let me take the responsibility today. It kind of sounds like you don't want me around for something, Yuri. It, it's not that. It's not that. I just... I didn't get much of a chance to discuss my book with Michael. It would just be embarrassing with you listening. <sighs> I guess I don't really have a choice, do I? I I'm sorry for causing trouble. Whoa, what the hell? Ah, uh, okay. Ah, <sighs> back at it. Ah, uh, wow. I don't know what's going on right now. Like these glitches, the fact that Monica didn't even try to stop the fight, didn't even try to, you know, mitigate it at all. And the fact that she is like, she is so dead set on it being okay if they just, you know, if it's just me and her. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I know she has something to do with it because it seems like even Yuri is scared of her or is very cautious around her. What the heck is this? What happens if I pick this? Let's pick the glitch. Oh, what the heck? Okay. Maybe I shouldn't have picked the glitch? Uh. Okay. Whoa. Uh. Oh, this word I'm never picking. I don't care. Uh, I don't know 
what's gonna happen, but hmm. Interesting. I think whenever I pick like the the lighthearted words, I hear that weird glitch sound, but Yep. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting to, club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple of days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Welcome back, Michael. Ah, uh, hi, Yuri. I'm not sure if it's me or if it's Yuri's expression, but the weight of yesterday's quarrel still hangs in the air a little. Um, Yuri glances over her shoulder looking around the room. Natsuki's beating manga at the desk, and surprisingly, Monica isn't here yet. Suddenly, Yuri takes my arm and pulls me up to the corner of the room. About yesterday, I... I really need to apologize. Nothing like that has ever happened before. And something just came over me, I guess. I wasn't acting mentally sound. Please don't think we're usually like this. Not just me, but Natsuki as well. Yuri, I'm happy that you are considerate and apologized. You don't have to worry too much. Even though I've only been here a couple of days, I could tell something was off yesterday. Maybe we were just a little extra sensitive because it was our first time sharing poems. But whatever it was, it didn't make me think any less of you. I had already decided that there's no way you can be a bad person. And now that you're apologizing, I know you really didn't mean it. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, Michael, don't say those kinds of things so frankly. They make me a little too happy. I'm really glad you're such an understanding person. And I'm really glad that you joined this club. Everything's a little bit brighter with you around and... Ah. Uh, sorry, what am I saying right now? I just... Hey, have you guys seen Monica? Ah! No, I haven't. I was also kind of wondering where she was. Man. Yuri, I'm guessing you haven't either. Yuri is clearly taken aback by how calmly Natsuki is addressing her. N no, I haven't. Jeez, this isn't like her at all. I know it's stupid, but I can't help but worry a little bit. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Um, Natsuki, about yesterday. I, I just wanted to apologize. I promise I didn't mean any of the things I said. And I'll do my best to stay under control from now on. So, Yuri, what the heck are you talking about? I saw that coming. The moment she, the moment Natsuki came to the picture acting like everything was just, you know, chill, I knew it. She forgot about the fight. Did you do something yesterday? Jeez. Whatever's on your mind, I'm sure it was nothing. That's a weird way to put it. I don't even remember anything bad happening. Whoa. You're the kind of person who worries too much about the little things, aren't you? But, I'll accept your apology anyway if it helps you feel better about it. That was what? That was weird. <laughs> Besides, it's kind of nice to hear since I was always afraid you secretly hated me or something like that. No, not at all. I don't hate you. Well, you're kind of weird, but I don't hate you either. Natsuki turns to me. You're still on trial though. Hey. Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Nah. Well, Natsuki was. I I was not. <laughs> what took you so long anyway? Ah, uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> That makes no sense though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Ah, don't give me more credit than I deserve. I guess I've been practicing for a while, but I'm still not really good yet. Still, that must require a lot of dedication. So, I'm still impressed. Ah, oh, well, thanks, Yuri. You should play something for us sometime. <laughs> that's... Monica looks at me. Well, I am working on writing a song, but it's not quite done yet. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. That sounds cool. I look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Michael. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah, uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I was hoping that I could share it with you anyway. I guess that's why I've been practicing so much recently. I see. I'm not sure if Monica was referring to the whole club or just me. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? Not 
Not really. I choose not to bring up anything that the three of us talked about. Besides, Natsuki has already run off into the closet. Michael. Um, since your compliments put me in a good mood, I was wondering if you would like to spend some time together today. I mean, in the club. Yeah, definitely. I planned on it anyway. Okay! Can we start now? Let's find a place to sit. Uh, uh, I'm being a little forceful, aren't I? I'm sorry. My heart just won't stop pounding for some reason. Don't worry about it. If anything, it's nice to see you have so much energy. Y yeah, but I need to try and calm down. I won't be able to focus on reading like this. Take your time. Yuri takes a deep breath and pulls a copy of the book out of her bag. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk and then I'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. I might as well walk with you. Th that's okay. You stay here. It won't take long. Pitcher in hand, Yuri hurries out of the classroom. Ah, did Yuri leave you again? No, it's not like that this time. She should fill in up the water pitcher to make tea. Oh, okay. Sorry for misunderstanding. This time I didn't go with her to get water. Slight differences, but it might be a ripple later down the line. Ten minutes pass. Yuri said it wouldn't take long. Is something holding her up? I'm bored just waiting here, so I decided to go look for her. Let's see. The most logical place for Yuri to be would be the nearest water fountain. I start heading down the hallway. Ha. 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 What's that noise? It's coming from around the corner. It sounds like breathing. God. A sharp inhale like someone is sucking at the air through their teeth. Are they in pain? I reach the corner and peer around it. Yuri? Yeah. What the? Whoa, 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 what? What on earth? I'm back. Thanks for waiting patiently. Michael, do you like oolong tea? Uh, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. You set the temperature in the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything. Hoo hoo. In that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will. Okay, I don't know what on earth that was. I know that she was in pain earlier and then everything just went by in an instant. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, even she starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around anyway. Ah, uh, That's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Michael. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Michael, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Uh, why is that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Ah, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have a back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because my... Ah, uh, my, my... Your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading? Y yes! I have terrible reading posture, so that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. Ah, oh, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies. I take it since it will go well with the tea. You and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. 
How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuya was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now, I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally managed to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Uh, sorry. I briefly let it go. I pre ah, I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Uh, that's that's okay. I won't take any. Are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then it might get smudges in the pages. Ah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri's totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then I take another chocolate, and I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Uh, um... Michael... Sorry. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Uh, Yuri starts to breathe heavily. I... I can't... Michael? Suddenly, Yuri forcefully grabs my arm and jerks me to my feet. My teacup gets knocked over. Michael. My heart. My heart won't stop pounding, Michael. I can't calm down. I can't focus on anything anymore. Can you feel it, Michael? Yuri suddenly presses my hand against her chest. Why is this happening to me? I feel like I'm losing my mind. I can't make it stop. It even makes me not want to read. I just want to look at you. Whoa. Hey. Hey. Whoa. Ha. Ha. Whoa, 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 what is this? Uh, um, it's time to share poems. Ah, was so weird. I don't know what to make of that, guys. That was very weird. She didn't do that in the previous, uh, the previous save. Alright, you know what? Top to bottom. Hmm. Well, it's not really worse, any worse than your last one, but I can't really say it's any better either. Huh. What? Huh. What? Oh, uh, well, anything that isn't a train wreck, I'll take as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. H hey, what makes you. Wait, maybe that was a compliment. Aha, glad to see someone recognizes my experience. Well then keep practicing and maybe you'll be as good as me someday. That's... Uh... Something tells me Natsuki completely missed the point. Just make sure you find a little bit of influence from everyone. I think you're at least... I think you're at least being influenced by Yuri a little bit, aren't you? I mean, I know you've been like... Spending some time with her or whatever. But you know, Monica and I are just as good as her. At, at poems, I mean. So you should really try to learn something or you'll never get better. Here's the one I wrote. I'll make sure you learn something from it. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wiggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. 
Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out they make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes, as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Such as two of the girls in this very club whom I respectfully won't name. Kind of ironic that even in my one place of comfort I can't even have people respect me. Jeez, now you're making me complain too much. What did I do? For what's worth, I respect you. Well, I guess, thanks. But it's kind of obvious that you respect Yuri more, so... Whatever, we're done sharing, so you can leave now. The attitude. <laughs> the tsundere strikes. I've been waiting for this. Let's see what you've been... Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Michael, this one might even be better than yesterday's. How did you even pick up pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why? You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Ever her, even her hands appear sweaty. Ah, ah, that makes me so happy. It's so amazing to feel like I'm valued, my, valued Michael. Everything that you write is a treasure is a treasure to me. Okay, so we got the Sundere and now we may have a Yandere. I had a feeling she was the Yandere type too, but I was thinking it could have also been Monica. I, I have to find out what Monica is. My heart pounds just holding it. I want to write a poem about this feeling. Is that bad, Michael? I'm not being weird, right? I, I'm having a harder time than usual at concealing my emotions. I'm kind of embarrassed, but right now I just want you to read my poem too, okay? Oh, this one's new. Wheel. Alright, let's uh, get in the zone. A rotating wheel, turning an axle, grinding, bolt head, linear gearbox, falling sky, seven holy stakes, a docked ship, a portal to another world, a thin rope tied to a thick rope, a torn harness, parabolic gearbox, expanding universe. Time controlled by slipping cogwheels, existence of God, swimming with open water in all directions, drowning. A prayer written in blood, a prayer written in time-devouring snakes with human eyes. A thread connecting all living human eyes. A kaleidoscope of holy... Oh, sorry, a kaleidoscope of holy stakes. Exponential gearbox, a sky of exploding stars, God disproving the existence of God. Wow. A wheel rotating in six dimensions, 40 gears and a ticking clock. A clock that ticks one second for every rotation of the, of the planet. A clock that ticks 40 times every time it ticks every second time. A bolt head of holy stakes tied to the existence of a dock ship to another world. A kaleidoscope of blood written in clocks. A time devouring prayer connecting a sky of 40 gears and an open, an open human eyes in all directions. Breathing gearbox, breathing bolt head, breathing ship, breathing portal. Breathing snakes, breathing God, breathing blood, breathing holy stakes, breathing human eyes, breathing time, breathing prayer, breathing sky, breathing wheel. So what I take from this poem is that she may unknowingly or unconsciously know that something is weird with the world we're in right now, or at least this reality, I feel like that could be what she's trying to convey, I believe. <laughs> it doesn't really matter what it's about. My mind has been a little hyperactive lately, so I had to take it out on your pen. Uh, that is, uh, a pen fell out of your backpack yesterday, so I took it home for safekeeping and... <sighs> yeah, this is... We're, we're in for a rough... Rough few uh, parts, guys. We are in for a rough few videos. <laughs> I um I just really like the way that it writes. So I wrote this poem with it. And now you're touching it. <laughs> I I'm okay. What did I just... 
Can we pretend this conversation never happened? You can keep the poem though. Alright, Monica, let's see what you got. Michael, I think you saw something earlier that you weren't supposed to see. I didn't want you to, I didn't want to have to tell you this, but I don't think I have a choice. It's getting kind of dangerous for you to spend so much time with Yuri. I don't know why, but she seems pretty easily excitable when she's around you, which shouldn't be a problem in itself. But when Yuri gets too excited, she finds a place to hide and starts cutting herself with a pocket knife. Whoa, whoa. You don't go and say that as a matter of fact or so casually. Isn't that kind of messed up? She even brings a different one to school every day like she has a collection or something. I mean, it's definitely not because she's depressed or anything like that. Uh, then what else could it be? I think she just gets some kind of high from it. It might even be like a sexual thing. But the point is, you've kind of been enabling her. I'm not saying it's your fault though. Yeah, you're one to talk about enabling, woman. I don't, I don't... I don't know what's going on here, but I don't like her trying to turn the tables and making it seem like it's all my fault. No, I wasn't enabling nothing. I didn't even know what's going on with her. But I guess that's why I had to explain it all to you. So I think if you keep your distance, that would probably be best for her. While you're at it, don't be shy to spend a little more time with me. Mm hmm. It's one of the... It, like, I know that after what I saw with Yuri, I should, you know be a little bit more cautious around her. But I also know this one wants to monopolize my time alone with her. I don't know what Natsuki's thing is yet. Like at the moment, it's just these two girls that I'm trying to understand. More so Yuri than this one because I kind of have a feeling or I kind of have a good idea as to what she's about, AKA Monica. To put it lightly, I at least have it together in the head and I know how to treat my club members. See, she's even talking bad about her friends. What what kind of... She, wa she wasn't necessarily like this in the previous video, but... Uh, sorry, previous video. Previous uh, reality or save point, or however you want to go about it. But... Or at least she was more secretive about it. She was more discreet. Now she's being way too casual. She's like open. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Save me, the colors they won't The colors they won't bright bit flashing piercing cacophony. So it's the same poem but it's more a mess. It's disorganized, it's losing its uh its wording. The noise, it won't stop. Violent grating cosine sine tangent. Yeah, it's becoming an unintelligible now. Oh, well, look at that. Now, is she telling me to delete someone or is she talking about deleting someone else? So she did delete Sayori and now she's planning on deleting this one, uh, Yuri, I think. This is getting more and more intense, guys. Look at that smile. Sorry, I know it's kind of abstract. No, it is not. I'm just trying to, um, well, never mind. There's no point in explaining. Anyway, here's Monica's running tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when, um, who am I talking to? Can you hear me? Tell me you can hear me. Anything. Oh, we're getting meta now. If we weren't meta before, we're extra meta today. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. You have unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? What the heck? It's Monica. What on earth? Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? We have something we need to go over today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? So the sound is kind of uh nulled. Whoa. What is what is that? Well sort of. Uh do we really have to do something for the festival? What is that sound? It's not like we can put together anything in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. Uh... 
Whoa, okay, that scared me. What the heck was that? I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're gonna keep it simple, okay? Look, I know everyone's been a little more lively ever since Michael joined them. We've started with some club activities. But this isn't the time for us to become complacent. We still only have four members. And the festival is our only real chance to find more, you know? What's so great about getting new members anyway? We already have enough to be considered an official club. More members would just mean everything gets noisier and more difficult to manage. Natsuki, I don't think you're looking at it the right way at all. Don't you want to share your passion with as many people as you can? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? The literature club should be a place where people can express themselves like they can't do anywhere else. It should be a place so intimate that you never want to leave. Mm. That's a foreshadowing if I ever saw one. I know you feel that way too. I know we all do. So that's why we should work hard and put something together for the festival, even if it's something small. Right, Michael? Uh, oh, come on. You can't take advantage of Michael to agree with you just because he doesn't know how to say no to anything. Look, Monica, do you really think any of us here joined the club with other people in mind? Yuri never even talked until Michael joined. As for me, I just liked it better here than I do at home. And Michael isn't even passionate about literature in the first place. And that's everyone. Sorry, but you're really the only one who's so interested in finding new members. The rest of us are fine like this. I know you're president and all, but you should really consider our opinions for once. Monica is clearly taken aback by Natsuki's words. That's not true at all. I'm sure Yuri and Michael want to get more members too, right? I don't know about Yuri, but I'm kind of indifferent. If I showed as much enthusiasm as Monica wanted, then I would probably be lying. Still, if it's up to me to rescue the situation. Um, no. Natsuki's right, isn't she? This club. It's nothing more than a place for a few people to hang out. Why did I think that everyone here saw it the same way as I did? But that doesn't mean that we're against getting new members or anything. Michael, why did you even join this club? What were you hoping to get out of it? Well, that's not really something I can be honest about, is it? In fact, if I remember, you weren't even given a choice not to join. Monica sits down and stares at her desk. What's the point of all this anyway? What if starting this club was a mistake? Now you've done it. What, me? I just spoke my mind. Is it a crime to be honest? It's not about being honest, it's about word choice. Besides, you have no right to speak for everyone else in the club like that. You don't understand that at all. I just... I just want a place that feels nice to hang out with a few friends. Is there a problem with the club being that for me? There aren't, there aren't many other places like that for me. And now Monica wants to take it away from me. She's not taking anything away. No, Michael. It's not the same. It won't be the same with the direction she wants to take it. If I wanted that, then I could have just joined any other stupid club. But this one, I mean, at least for a little bit of time, things were nice. Natsuki starts packing up her things. I'm going home. I feel like I don't belong here right now. Natsuki. Natsuki ignores Yuri and walks right out of the classroom. This is bad. I don't know what to do. Well, do you have an opinion on the festival? I, I don't know. I'm kind of indifferent, I guess. Who cares about that obnoxious brat? Whoa. I mean, I like how nice and quiet the club is right now. And I'm just happy with you here. But still, I'm the vice president. It's not right for me to ignore my responsibilities like that. Nobody would cry if she killed herself. Whoa. Whoa, what the? <laughs> I should do my best to consider everyone's perspective and make the decision that's right for the club. What about you, Michael? What do you want to get out of this club? Yuri repeats the same questions as Monica. I decide giving an indirect answer is better than nothing. I think the most important thing is for everyone to get along and for the club to provide something that you can't get anywhere else. I don't think it's about how many members, but rather the quality of each member. That's what will end up making the literature club a special place. I see. I really agree with you. Each member contributes their own qualities in a special way. With each change in members, the identity of the club as a whole will change too. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Is there blood falling from her eyes? Oh my gosh, what is going on? Stepping out of your comfort zone once in a while. So if you would like to help Monica with the festival, then I'm on your side as well. Alright, well maybe we can all talk to Natsuki tomorrow. Yuri nods. Hey, Yuri. 
I know things were a little awkward yesterday, but I feel like you deserve to know that I still think you're a wonderful vice president. And also a wonderful friend. M Monica, I want to do everything I can to make this the best club ever. I'll give Monica this, she's a good manipulator. Ah, uh, like... I don't understand this whole glitch thing, it's happening a lot more frequently and we're seeing the inner thoughts of Yuri, but I'm still more guarded against Monica than even this Yandere over here. <laughs> okay, me too. Yeah, let's all go home for today. We'll talk about the festival tomorrow. Okay, I look forward to it. Shall we go, Michael? Um, please don't take this the wrong way, but... I'm going to chat a little bit with Michael before we leave. Just to see what he thinks of his time here and all that. It's important to me as president. Yuri looks a little troubled, but she doesn't protest. Okay. I trust your judgment, Monica. In that case, I'll see you two- I'll see the two of you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Monica waves as Yuri exits the classroom. Phew! Things have been a bit hectic lately, haven't they? Michael, I just wanted to make sure you're enjoying your time at this club. I think you're the reason why the club is acting off. Oh, wow. Why am I just noticing now in the background that it's all uh, staticky? <laughs> ah, tunnel vision again. Oh, wait, is it getting dimmer? Holy cow. I really hate to see you unhappy. I feel kind of like I'm responsible for that as president. I bet you are responsible for what's going on right now. And I really do care about you, you know? I don't like seeing the other girls give you a hard time. With how mean Natsuki is and everything, and Yuri being a little bit, you know. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like you and I are the only real people here. Uh huh. You know what I mean? But it's weird because in all the time you've been here, we've hardly gotten to spend any time together. Uh, I mean, I guess it's technically only been a couple of days. Sorry, I didn't mean to say something weird. There are just some things I've been hoping to talk about with you. Things I know only you could understand. Wait, not yet. No, stop it. Ah, okay, guys. Um, <laughs> so I'm a little confused. I think so. I'm pretty sure Monica's aware of what's going on. I don't know if she's the evil perpetra perpetrator. <laughs> Or not, like, after that last couple of seconds, it made it seem like Monica didn't, like, was a little bit sincere. I don't know. Uh, so, I'm gonna end the video here for today, guys. Thank you for watching. Until the next one.